so recently I've been playing Half-Life 2 again if you're familiar with my channel. Valve actually released an update for Half-Life 2 back in 2015 including high quality textures, high dynamic range and better performance. Actually this game was released in 2004 which at that time was looking scary good. Even now in 2018 I appreciate the visuals of a game which came out 14 years ago. That's why I consider this game as one of my favorite games. But the thing that we're going to talk about today is high dynamic range or it's called as HDR. But what exactly is HDR? According to Wikipedia, high, dy high dynamic range is a technique used in imaging and photography to reproduce a greater dynamic range of luminosity than is possible with standard digital imaging or photographic techniques. The aim is to present a similar range of luminance to the experienced through the human visual system. So basically HDR is simulated eye adaption towards light source. For example, if you're looking at a dull wall for a long time and then suddenly you look at a bulb, you will not be easily able to look inside the bulb and find the light source. Over time your eyes adapt and you can then see the light source a bit better. This can be simulated in a video, a photograph or even a game by increasing exposure of unfocused light source and creating a bloom effect. Notice that I said unfocused, that means if the photograph is of a bulb, then the HDR effect won't work as there is no object for the light to reflect and create a bloom effect while keeping the light source exposed. But we are talking about HDR HDR effect in games. Recent games do support HDR, but the first game that I knew had HDR was Half-Life 2, especially the Lost Coast Tangent Level, where Valve even provided a developer commentary mode, which I went through to understand the working of HDR in Half-Life 2. Let's take an example of an ordinary bulb in the game. Looking at the object reflecting light, suddenly as I look towards the light, you can see the light is brightened to its max, creating a bloom sometimes more than 100% of your monitor brightness. But as I keep looking now, I can see the bulb which was not previously visible. That means that in game, our eyes are adapting towards the light. And as soon as I look down, you can see that the brightness of the room increases a bit, showing that we now adapt to a darker room. Now because the light source was closed, the adaption was a bit slow. But if the source is far away, in the, in the case, sun, you can see that we adapt pretty quickly, showing that HDR in source engine consist considers distance as well. But that's not it, HDR can be used in other ways as well. As I said before, we need an object reflecting light to bloom to cause the HDR effect. The developer commentary explains this. With conventional rendering, seen here on the left, if something on the screen is 20% reflective like the wet sand, then the maximum reflected brightness can only be 20% of the maximum brightness of your monitor. HDR's more accurate simulation of light ensures that the sun's reflection on this wet sand appears as it would in the real world, which could potentially use 100% of the maximum monitor brightness. HDR uses bloom to simulate light that is beyond 100% of a monitor's maximum brightness. Another cool thing that HDR can do is handling the exposure of light from a less bright area to a completely lit area. It is also called as dynamic tone mapping, more explained in the dev commentary. One of the features of our HDR solution is dynamic tone mapping. The easiest way to think about dynamic tone mapping is that it's a method of simulating the way the human eye reacts to light. In the real world, you've probably walked into a dark room and noticed your eye adjusting to the darkness letting you see better after some time. Or you've walked out into a bright day and been blinded by the sun, only to have your eye adjust and allow you to see normally. Your iris is adjusting itself in response to the amount of light hitting your eye. Dynamic tone mapping simulates this by automatically adjusting the exposure of the scene to mimic the behavior of your iris. You can see this as the view moves from the dark tunnel to the bright sun and back again. Here, you can see the way we calculate the amount of light hitting the player's eyes. We'd take a snapshot of the scene, measure the brightness levels, and then use that to adjust exposure. We consider light at the center of the screen more important than at the edges to better simulate the geometry of the eye. 
So HDR can simulate eye adaption. Well, at least most of it. Due to limitations of source engine, it cannot create the create the effect of dynamic shadow lights, which is basically creating low brightened areas with balanced detailing and textures. Source 2 engine is capable of handling dynamic shadow lightings, which brings uh, to the point of porting of Valve games to Source 2 Engine, like Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Left 4 Dead 2, which actually was ported from Source 2 to Source 1, but whatever, and possible arrival of Half-Life 3. Unreal Engine can handle HDR as good as Source can, point to be noted. And a lot of games trick us by creating dark environments, making us think that the light is handled in HDR, well it's not. While I play Half-Life 2 waiting for 3, I wonder whether HDR would take the gaming industry in the future.